Hey there everyone, my name is Gage LaPierre and today we're over here at Alfred A. Ring Park. Alfred A. Ring Park is a really cool place. It's right here in the heart of Gainesville, Florida. Um, it's one of the few communities that we've uh, visited so far that um, resides entirely within an urban matrix. And if you're in town, you should really check it out sometime. So here at Alfred A. Ring Park, we're uh, walking through what's known as an upland hardwood forest. So how do I know that this is an upland hardwood forest and what makes it that? Well, for starters, let's just, uh, let's just think about what's below our feet, and that's the soil. So the soil here at Alfred A. Ring Park is classified as an ultisol, and this is the case uh, for a lot of the upland hardwood um, forest uh, in Florida and across much of the southeast. So what's important to note about an ultisol is that ultisols are basically um, composed very heavily of red clay and they also have a um, very distinguishable uh, set of soil horizons and typically um, ultisols are kind of seen as this um, uh, very weathered soil and the product of um, being in these very rainy and temperate uh, environments. It's also important to note that uh, in some areas in Florida and in the southeast, uh, upland hardwood forests can be um, found on soils that are classified as alpha sols. And alpha sols are very similar to ulta sols. Um, one of the few differences between them is that alpha sols are less leached, they're less weathered, and uh, this typically means that they have a less well-developed um, set of soil horizons and then um, there's also a difference in the pH um, but again uh, there is that presence of uh, that subsurface zone where uh, clay accumulates so something else to keep in mind. So that similarity in between ultisols and alpha sols um, in having a high content of clay within the soil profile a lot it does a couple of things for the overstory and the understory and what we see above ground uh, the first thing that it, it does and it's well known that you know this presence of clay allows for better nutrient retention in the soil but on the flip side it also um, allows for um, slower water filtration through the profile so in certain areas and in certain upland hardwood forests you may have soils that become highly saturated throughout the year and this limits what is going to grow in upland hardwood forests. So the things you see above ground, um, this mix of hardwood species, they have to be adapted uh, to grow there. And so with that in mind, let's think about the overstory and let's talk about what we're seeing right now um, and some of the species that are found here at Alfred A. Ring and you know, I have to say there are some really large specimens here. Uh, just for being in uh, such an urban area, it's uh, pretty cool that we still have um, areas like this in town where you can go to and just see some really large specimens. Um, so uh, one of the more common species that we're seeing throughout the park and is common um, in upland hardwood forests in Florida is um, pignut hickory. And that's this one here. And so another species that we're seeing a lot of here at Alfred A. Ring and is very common in upland hardwood forests is live oak. And that's Quercus virginiana. Um, it's important to note that this is a different species than the one that you would find in Sandhill, which would be um, sand live oak. Something else um, that we're seeing a lot of uh, as well is just some really big um, southern magnolias. Um, and this species is, should be very well known um, for many of you uh, being in the south and in, and in Florida. Uh, this species is very widely planted and very widely admired. And you know it's not uh, unusual to also find uh, not just hardwoods in upland hardwood forests but it's also um, something that you do see at times in different areas is some pines and here at Alfred Airing um, there are a lot of um, very large, again, <laughs> uh, lob lolly pine. And this one is um, pretty unique because it's a species that 
is actually very commonly planted all throughout the southeast as a um, uh, production timber tree. And you know, it's, uh, it's also worth noting that there are just so many different um, other overstory species that are here that I just don't have time to cover all of them. And And so one of the things that you've uh, you've probably picked up at this point is I haven't shown much of the ground cover or understory here at Alfred A. Ring. And um, one of the things uh, that we're seeing a lot of, though, um, is this one palmetto that's not a, not cabbage palm, but uh, what's known as dwarf palmetto. So it's uh, similar to cabbage palm, but it never really gets much bigger than this right here. And some other understory species that we're seeing um, out here today include a lot of different species of ferns uh, what's known as a, a wood oak um, it's better known as chasmanthium that's the genus and we're also seeing um, a grass species known as a woods grass in places and um, similar to some of the other communities we're also seeing uh, just a um, wide variety of vines like Virginia creeper muscadine and uh, Smilax and typically these are occurring around some of these um, open gaps. So one of the things that you've probably already noticed here at Alfred A. Ring Park is we are really close to a creek and this creek is here at Alfred A. Ring is called uh, Hogtown Creek and Hogtown Creek is a somewhat unique waterway but it's not unusual to find uh, a mixed hardwood uh, forest in such close proximity to a waterway. Uh, a lot of times mixed upland hardwood forest will will uh, be found along some of these steep slopes and rises that are adjacent to uh, river floodplains and um, creeks and streams. Something, other places that uh, upland hardwood forest can typically occur along is just uh, steep hillsides and also along um, the slopes of sinkholes. And in either of these uh, cases, a lot of times you will find um, you know, limestone outcroppings and things of that nature, which um, we're seeing here today at Alfred A. Ring, and so that's due to just a steep, such a steep drop off. Hey there everyone, so today uh, we're over here at San Palasco Hammock. San Palasco Hammock is an awesome place. It's only about a 10 minute drive northwest of town of Gainesville, Florida. Uh, if you haven't been, come check it out. And right now we're standing on the edge of what's known as a mixed upland hardwood forest. And let's go check it out. So somewhat similar to uh, Alfred A. Ring Park, here at San Flasco Hammock in this upland hardwood forest that we're in right now, we're seeing some similar species. We're seeing uh, some maples, we're seeing uh, some hickories, sugarberries. Uh, we're also seeing uh, some sweet gums, some laurel oak, some live oak, and uh, we're also uh, seeing some uh, southern magnolias. One species that we're seeing here that uh, we didn't really encounter at Alfred A. Ring, though, is we are seeing some very large uh, spruce pines, which are different than loblolly pine. Um, one of the ways you can tell is they, uh, they generally have a much more tighter bark, and their needles are a little bit smaller than loblolly pine. Um, another thing to note about spruce pine is um, they are incredibly tolerant to uh, shading from all of these hardwood species that we're seeing right now, and they don't need much of a gap to come up. Um, as lobbelly pine would. The understory here is uh, not is a little bit more sparse than Alfred A. Ring, but we are seeing that uh, that dwarf palm again, and we're also seeing some uh, some chasmanthium, and we're also seeing um, some sedges here and there. So in regards to uh, mixed upland hardwood forest and the understory, it's also worth mentioning that some species like trilliums and violets, um, which are present here at San Velasco and at other upland hardwood forests throughout the state of Florida. Um, some of those species may not be uh, present when you visit them. Uh, they only come up during certain times of the year and sometimes 
uh, you may miss them. The thing that's different uh, here at San Flasco that we're already starting to see, and I hope we can pick this up in the camera, but um, instead of having, um, we're on a slope, but instead of having it go down into a creek, we're actually seeing uh, this slope go down into a sinkhole, which is uh, really cool. So keeping in mind the general location in which upland hardwood forests occur in Florida, um, it's important to also keep in mind some of the natural processes and uh, disturbances that would go into uh, helping maintain not only the, the structure but the composition of upland hardwood forest. So some of these disturbances and processes include uh, things like hurricanes. Hurricanes are an irregular process. Um, and you know very stochastic in nature but nevertheless over a very long time period hurricanes do play um, a role in shaping the composition in upland hardwood forest uh, mainly by providing uh, new gaps in the forest in which a um, new cohort of trees can grow into. Another natural process uh, or disturbance that would have uh, helped maintain the composition and structure of upland hardwood forest um, include uh, low intensity fires. Now mind you, uh, this depends on the location and the type of upland hardwood forest um, that you're talking about, but in general, um, depending on uh, the proximity of upland hardwood forest to other uh, pyrogenic communities, it would have been a natural uh, process for some of these fires to creep in along the edges of upland hardwood forest and into the interiors some years. Um, especially during drier, drier years. And so some of the threats that are facing upland hardwood forest uh, aren't too dissimilar from the same threats that are facing other natural communities in Florida. Uh, these threats include uh, rapid urbanization across the landscape as well as uh, land clearing activities for uh, various different um, purposes. And another threat um, to go alongside with those um, are the threat of invasive species, which in the case of mixed upland hardwood forest uh, generally include uh, invasive species like coral ardesia, air potato, um, camphor tree, and um, many others. Typically, invasive species um, will occur in mixed upland hardwood forests that um, have a lot of edges or are near um, modes of um, entry. Along with these invasive plants, we also have invasive animals that also threaten upland hardwood uh, communities, and this includes hogs. Um, hog damage is uh, pretty extensive here at a uh, San Flasco hammock, at least it has in previous years, and as we're seeing it right now, um, hogs generally uproot the understory, and they can uh, cause quite a bit of damage to uh, some of the more sensitive species that are out here.